Hey y'all, welcome back to A Dinosaur in the Library. I'm Dawn and I'm here to review one of my favorite series in the entire universe, if not my favorite, and that is Magic X Libras by Jim C. Hines. Specifically, um, I'm here to re review the fourth and final book in the series. So you may have noticed I have a little friend today. So if you've read this series, you know that Isaac, the main, uh, the main character, pulls a fire spider out of a book as a kid and Smudge is his constant companion through the entire series and I've never been a very I mean I'm I love arts and crafts and things like this but I've never been great at drawing or anything like this even though I love to, to doodle and things um so I've never really done fan art that much but I love this series so much and love Smudge so much that I made my own little Smudge. And albeit it's not the best quality in the world. He's a little um, yarn and pipe cleaner creation with a little bit of um, red tinsel on him to simulate the fire. But he sits on my bookshelf next to the series and I absolutely love him. And I thought that he should be here for this. So... A few weeks ago, may have been in December sometime, Jim C. Himes, who I follow on Facebook, um, said that his, they were looking for a few more people to review Revisionary, which is the fourth and final book in the series, which is coming out on February 2nd. So I immediately sent off an email. Um, and the person I spoke to was so very nice and she said, I'll send you a book right out and it never arrived. So I emailed back and asked and she was so kind to send me out a second copy. Um, we have no idea what happened to the first copy. It just did not get here. Um, so somewhere I hope that if it actually landed on a doorstep somewhere in Tallahassee that whoever got it likes the series or will read the series now because I don't know what happened to it. But um, this is the copy I got. It's obviously an arc um, and it's a different kind of arc than I've ever gotten. Usually the arcs that I've gotten hold of have been, um, you know, promotional arcs with like the blurbs and things like that on the back, but it's just, you know, the white paper and this tape kind of binding and the amazing cover. So you can see here, this is Isaac with Smudge flaming on his shoulder and Lena, the dryad, uh, there beside him with the sword. So I'm going to try to do this as spoiler free as absolutely possible because I really want to promote this series. I absolutely love it so much. And if you've been here a while, you know this. I talk about this series constantly. Every time there's um, a tag for, you know, question about anything like I will generally jam this series in wherever I can. Um, I happened to pick up Libriomancer which is the very first in the series just by chance. Um, I think at Barnes and Noble one day I just happened to see the title Libriomancer and I thought well that's got to have something to do with books and pulled it off and this is the very epic cover and I really want to get hard covers of all of them because I have signed book I have three signed book plates um, that I got through a promotion a while back and I put one of them in Codex Born which is the second one because I bought it in hardcover the day it came out and yeah this is supposed to be Lena on the cover as well but I much prefer the Lena on Revisionary because it seems like a much better representation of her I think um yeah this this isn't as this isn't as close to Lena's characters I as as I would have hoped but um the cover is still beautiful and I put one of the signed book plates in here and of course I got them prior to um the fourth book being out so I don't have one for that one but that's okay um and the third book in the series is Unbound and this is a promotional arc that I won through Goodreads when this one came out and I still need to get a hardcover of this one uh, because this is a series that I will be keeping. I will not be getting rid of these books. I love them so, so much. Uh, but this is the third book and you will see this is Isaac and there's Smudge on his shoulder again. And I'll tell, oh, Smudge Phil. Well, I'll sit him down there. I don't, it wasn't positioned very well. And I'll tell you, I think that this cover is probably my favorite. Um, this is probably the closest uh, to my own mental image of them. So let me tell you a little bit about the series. Um, 
basically what happened was this when Johann Gutenberg invented the or you know mass did the printing press um, he also discovered that there was a possibility of magic called libriomancy which means you can use books and the power of books um, having been read to form things out of the books themselves so for instance um, if you were possessed of the ability to perform Libriomancy and you were reading say The Lord of the Rings it would be possible theoretically for you to pull out the One Ring. Um, unfortunately, well not unfortunately, um, fortunately uh, Gutenberg figured out early on that there are a lot of books that probably do not need to be uh, usable for magic. So those books became locked. Um, Lord of the Rings is one of them that was locked because nobody needs the One Ring. Let's just be 100% honest here. Um, and Libriomancy is a little bit fuzzy. So um, no one is really sure the extents of the possibilities of it um, throughout the entire series. That's one thing I love about this magic system. So you get a really good, and by fuzzy I don't mean through the the plot itself. What I mean is Jim C. Hines has created this really rich um, magical system in which you use books and the more that books are read the more powerful they are the more um, the easier it is to use them. So a book that's never been read is not really gonna be a good source of Libriomancy um, unless you're an extremely powerful Libriomancer. So um but the the more you read it 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 the more powerful it is. So Johann Gutenberg created this group, uh, they go by the porters, to sort of maintain some sort of sense of control over Libriomancy. Um, so that way there were catalogers and librarians and Isaac is a librarian. Um, in fact, at the beginning of the series, he is working in a library in Michigan as a public librarian, but he is also working for the porters, cataloging magical books, reading books, um, and cataloging them in terms of usefulness or danger or things like this. Because I'm sure, um, you know, as we all are book nerds here, we can think of plenty of books that would be amazing to us that would be like, oh my God, that would be amazing to be able to, to reach into that book and create that. But on the other hand, we can also think of things like the One Ring that should never, ever exist in the physical world because of what would happen. And the porters were par uh, partially, you know, that was part of their charge was maintaining that. Um, one of the side effects of Libriomancy is that magical creatures are also created. So think about vampire novels. Um, someone who is possessed of the power of Libriomancy and especially who doesn't know it yet. Um, they read a book and they become engrossed in the book and love the book and just become really focused and they accidentally slip into a scene and get bitten. So you've got multiple strains of vampire, you've got werewolves, sirens, um, dryads, Lena, who is one of the main characters. And I can't go really deeply into a lot of these things because I it ruin it would ruin some plot points later on in the series if you have not read them. So I'm just talking very vaguely here, but Lena is a dryad and it's not supposed to be possible to pull living creatures out of books, but it happens like Smudge. Smudge is a living fire spider and he was drawn out of a book when Isaac was in high school before he was um, trained as a porter. So the series develops so well. Um, I've found over the last few years, a lot of times I'll start reading, um, especially fantasy series, and the first couple of books are just amazing, and the world building is good, and the characterizations are good, but as it goes on, it kind of deteriorates, and the story becomes really predictable, and you, you know, it's almost not necessary to really read the last book in the series, or the next book in the series, because you know what's going to happen. Um, you know that, you know, this person is going to do this, and this is going to happen, and this is going to be the ending. This didn't ha that didn't happen with this series. Um, again, I can't really go into any of the plot points because I don't want to spoil anything, but you don't really get a sense of, I, I know what's gonna happen next. So that kept this series just fresh and amazing. And I will say that um, 
I have never read a series and I read a lot of books about books. Um, it's one of my favorite things is to read fiction and nonfiction about books uh, because I am just a mad fanatic for books. They are the most powerful and amazing thing that humanity has ever created in my humble opinion. Um, I think that, you know, imagination and the written word and the power of reading itself um, as a source of, um, you know, help and survival and empowerment is just one of the most amazing things ever. And I think that this series captures that very, very well because, you know, the magic is so dependent on belief and, and, you know, oh, there's just this, there's a great scene and this isn't, this isn't a spoiler. So, um, there's a great scene in this one where a lot of crap has happened and for reasons I won't go into, Isaac is having to very strongly focus on remembering the moment he was reading a particular book. So he's remembering, you know, being in his dorm room and the smell of ramen in the air and things like this and just the, the emotion of having discovered that book, um, you know, for doesn't matter which book it was, just the book, that particular book was so important. And I think that people who don't read a lot and people, even people who read but who aren't like obsessed with books as I and multiple people on here are, um, don't realize how emotionally attached you can become and how important those moments and those memories are. And this series captures that beautifully. Um, I just, I can't speak highly enough of that aspect of it. Another aspect of the series that is just, was unexpected. Um, I read the first book and I was like, this is just a damn good series. I love it. Um, books about books. It's got a fire spider in it. There's librarians. I'm not going to hate this. Um, you know, Codex Born, really, really good. Had some amazing things going on. Unbound, you know, it just kept getting better. But especially in the third and fourth books, um, well, the second book really, too, gets into it, too. Um, while these are fantasy novels and they're fiction and they're not, you know, um, specifically about any one thing uh, in terms of issues or anything, they raise a lot of really deep and important issues. Um, there's issues of identity, issues of um, self, um, the, of, of what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, the self-possession of oneself, of being able to name one's identity. Um, the the third book deals with um, depression and mental illness in a way that I just found amazing. And the fourth book deals with xenophobia and this this fear of the other and the just the violence that can come out of things like that and and the links to which people are forced to go to protect their identities and to protect their right to exist. And I mean, yes. And I, I don't mean to say this and to mean that other fantasy novels are fluff because that's not true. There's a lot of fantasy novels and a lot of fiction books out there that are, um, you know, about, you know, ostensibly just, just a fiction book, but they cover these really deep issues. But you don't necessarily expect to see some of these things in fantasy a lot of times. And Jim C. Hines has just done an amazing, amazing job. Um, to the point that I sent a personal message to him on Facebook. Whether or not he'll ever see it, I don't know. I sent a personal message to this man thanking him for writing this series because it is truly just something that I love so much and cannot imagine my life without now just because I love these characters and I love the way he made me think about um, books and the imagery in books and the magic of books and the power of books and just so many different things um, in here and I love that. I love that so so much and you know, if the universe is kind, I will eventually get to meet Jim C. Hines in person and let him know just how much I love the series. And this will not be a new thing. It's not like I'm the only person on earth who loves this series. There's so many people in his fan base who just love him for this and all his other books. But I just would love to meet him in person and say thank you for this because it's beautiful. So this has been a long and rambling 14 minute 
uh, book review in which I really couldn't review the book on plot and stuff because it is the fourth in a series and I above all I do not want to spoil this for anybody I really 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 suggest this series to anyone who loves um, fantasy it is an adult fantasy book there's not um it's it's not like massively inappropriate or something for for children but um it's not a it's not a young adult fantasy is what I'm saying um it's adult fantasy series um and it's just books about books there's librarianship in here um and just it's humor there it's hilarious it's really deep in places and I just fucking love this series just flat out love it um, and I just want to say thank you so, so much to Jim C. Hines for A, for writing the series, B, for posting on Facebook that they needed more reviewers, and C, for the lovely, lovely people at his publishing house sending me this book. I just, I'm going to purchase my own copy of this, obviously. Um, this is published by Daw, and, you know, I'm going to definitely buy this one the day it comes out it comes out february the 2nd i should have said that before now it comes out february the 2nd um please if you have not read this series go grab libriomancer they've all pretty much as far as i know come out in paperback at this point in fact i think unbound just hit paperback in uh, on the third second or third of this month um so they are all in paperback except for this one so they should be fairly cheap and easy to get hold of i know that they're available in ebook there's also a short story um, the title of which I cannot remember now, but it has Chupacabra in the title, which is a back story for one of the characters. I wouldn't suggest reading it first, um, but please, please do yourself a favor and read this series. It breaks my heart no end to know that I have no more of these to look forward to, but that just means I get to reread them again, right? Um, and I am definitely just going to go out and buy the hardcover of this. I don't often do that. I don't necessarily want extra copies or hardcovers of anything but hardcovers are very durable and this is a series that I'm going to be keeping for quite some time so I need to get all of them in hardcover. Um, I still have the Ark of Unbound and the Mass Market of Libriomancer but they are all so very good. Go get this. Um, and yeah so thanks for watching this review uh, as rambling and uh, as it was but I hope that it has inspired you to go out and read these books and I hope that everyone is having an awesome January and that you are doing some amazing reading so let me know in the comments down below what you think if you've read this series or if maybe you're planning on reading it and I will see you guys in the next video bye